Welcome everybody, this is Shooting the Breeze with Heather and today's guest is Diane Gates. Diane and I met back in, I believe, 2012 at the Blue Ridge Mountain Christian Writers Conference and we've both had very busy writing careers since then. Diane, tell me now, how many books do you have published? I have one published and one to do to be released in uh, early April. Early April, so, very, so right around the corner. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and tell us about these books. These books are based in Texas Rodeo. They're YA, but everybody that's reviewed them says they're for any age. It's Western Adventure, and it is exciting and fun. Uh, the first one was about rodeo. The second one is going to be more, more about the characters and, and why the antagonist is as snotty, nasty, mean as she is. <laughs> I read the first one. I enjoyed it very much, and um, I think I told you I'd re give you a review for the second one, didn't I? I get I get asked so much, I, I lose track. But I, if you need a review, happy to give you one. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Am I breaking up? How's how's the signal? My the people have gone, so we're gonna have to wing it. <laughs> okay, we'll be fine. So speak, we'll be fine. Speak up. Who is your publisher, Diane? Oh, well, I went with PRISM, and this past December, PRISM was purchased by Pelican Book Group, mm -hmm. and it's quite a difference working for a tiny publisher and working for a large publisher. Okay, I'm curious about that. Tell me some of the differences. Well, I could pick up the phone or get on the internet and talk with my editor and my publisher anytime. Mm -hmm. With a large publishing house, there's a, a chain of command mm -hmm. that you go through, mm -hmm. and everything is online. And for this, this computer challenge gal, that can present some problems. My learning curve has gone way up. Well, but it's, it's good to be challenged at our age, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we didn't grow up with it. My, if I had my grandson here, he could work it out. <laughs> I know. My teenagers can fix anything. Tell me how you got started writing. I have been writing since I was about 13 or 14 years old. As a matter of fact, I won a writing contest at church. On uh, I wrote an article, I still have it in the cedar chest, on the basis of a great nation is a Christian home. And I pull it out every now and then just to see how my writing has improved and my spelling, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I was, I was uh, really impressed with your first book, and that was Roped, right? Yes. Roped, and I did enjoy that very much. And the heroine is, um, what was she, about 12, something like Chrissy, that? Chrissy Crosby. She's 13. 13, right. And I found myself really drawn into her story. It didn't bother me at all that she was that she was young. Sometimes you read YA stuff and you can't really connect with the uh, protagonist, but I enjoyed her very much, and so I'm sure the sequel is going to be really good. Don't you think it's because her parents are so much a part of her story and it's a generational thing? I write mainly about relationships. And this second book is going to delve really into why this child is, is uh, the other girl that's, that's the villain, okay. is why she's as nasty as she is. And, and we're going to find out that she's got about three or four generations behind her that are just awful people. Oh, wow. That sounds interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's going to have murder and kidnapping and all sorts of stuff in it. Oh, yeah. okay. so this definitely sounds like a richer plot. Not that the first one was not, but it was a, it was a narrower plot. Yes. Uh, and Full-length novels, uh, both of them, right? I'm sorry? Full-length novels, both, both of them, right? No, and you really can't have a full novel in YA because you're limited with a word count uh, between 60 and 65,000 words. So that, that, that puts us in the novella range, doesn't it? Well, I don't, 
don't know anymore, Diane. I was reading something about it the other day, and 40 yeah. to 45,000 words they think is a novella, and anything beyond that's a novel. So I, I think it just depends on what definition you're looking at. Well, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, I this, didn't think it read like a novella, your first one, so I wouldn't, yeah. I would have called it a novel, a, a short novel, but not a novella. It was, it was awfully rich for a novella. Well, you know, I think some publishing houses call things one way and others call them another. I'm starting to so, see that. Uh, what, what do you got in the works after this one? I'm sorry? What do you have in the works after this one? The third book in the series, and it's called Untied. Untied. Okay, so will that complete the series? Are there three, three or more? No, we've got two more to go after that. Wow. If everybody keeps buying them. That's, that's really, I'm tickled to hear that for you. So are they all under contract with Penguin? Yes. Way to go. No, 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 no excuse me. They're not under contract yet. Uh, we, we're just new with Pelican, and it's Pelican, not Penguin. Sorry, uh, Pelican. Anyway, uh, I'm under contract for this one, and I was under contract with Prism. So I don't know, for the series, I don't know how this is going to work out yet. Well, God's got this like he's got everything else, huh? That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he, he has provided step by step. Amen. And, and it's just been absolutely fantastic to watch him work. And I have enjoyed watching your career blossom. Um, Thank you. And he's done it all. Amen. Amen, sister. Uh, okay, so I like to ask a couple of funny questions at the end of the interview. Go for it. I hope you're going to ask me the one about the uh, what kind of gun do I like to shoot. <laughs> okay, tell me, what, what kind of gun do you like to shoot, Diane? Well, my son is a fighter pilot, and he has an arsenal, and he let me shoot the judge, and I love the judge, and I would love to have the judge, but it's frankly more gun than I can afford, so. Do you want to tell I, us what the judge is? Huh? Tell us what the judge is. No, I couldn't tell you that. If I had to, it's a handgun, and it is powerful and one of the most popular guns. I understand it has quite a kick. Wow. But, yeah, it, it's dynamite. It cal? really is. Is it a 50 caliber? I'm sorry? Is it a 50 cal? 50 caliber? A shell? No, no. It's it's bullets. But anyway, and then I got, since I met you, I have got my license to carry. All right. Yes, I'm very pleased with that. I've got a little 32 pistol, and for Christmas, I got a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm up, living Diane. up to Chrissy's dream. <laughs> you crack me up. Okay. Um,. All right, so one of the other questions I always like to ask, because most of the authors I interview write romance, so this question may or may not be something you can answer. Can you tell me about your best or worst date ever? My best date ever was my first date ever, and I was 15 years old, and it was to my husband of 40 years. Oh. And he has, it was so funny, I was in the house listening out the window as he went to ask my dad's permission to take me out because he was an older man. He was five years older than me Yeah. and a, and a college guy. So anyway, I, uh, and, and Dick had a stuttering problem and he could hardly get the words out. And then when we went on the date, it didn't help. He was equally as stressed Aww. about talking. And do you know when he got over the stuttering? When the kids came along, he would read to them, and he never stuttered when he read. Isn't that amazing? That is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. What a great story. Yeah, it is. Aww. It is. So we were childhood sweethearts. And you've been married how long? 40 years. Aw, well, praise the Lord for good, solid marriages, huh? 
Yep. Yep. He is amazing. Okay, Diane, and, tell us where everybody can reach you. Tell, I'm sorry? Tell us where we can reach you. What are your links? Oh, uh, you can reach me on my blog at uh, WordPress, Diane Gates .wordpress com, And I have two there. I have the Southern Side of Flavor and Moving the Ancient Boundaries. The Southern Side of Flavor, of course, is about cooking mm -hmm. and cooking from the Southwest. Mm -hmm. Moving the Ancient Boundaries is a little heavy duty. Uh, it's mostly written to the church because I believe in this day and age, we have gone so far beyond the boundaries that God set for us as his people. And so I write about that. I always wondered where and you got I, the name from. Yeah. Yeah. If you go back through the Old Testament, it's constantly repeated over and over. Don't move the ancient boundaries. And that, that's exactly what we've done. We've moved the ancient boundaries. Yeah. Ooh, boy, I'll and so that. that's where that comes from. I also have, uh, you can reach me at Diane N. Gates at webs.com webstart.com okay and you're on Facebook and then you, and then you can reach me on Facebook at Diane Gates author okay. and that's with a capital A the other Diane Gates is in California and she doesn't write <laughs> okay so in case people aren't clear it's D I capital A and you got it yeah and there's a story behind that there's a story behind that, too. Okay, quick, tell us. I, I had a handbag business with the Atlanta and Miami Merchandise Mart. And I had to have a signature that they would recognize. And you can't do much with D-I-A-N-E. So I was sitting there scribbling one day, and I thought, huh, I'll just capitalize the A. Diane. Diane. I got it. You got it. There you go. All right. Well, we so much appreciate you coming by, Diane. It was so nice to see your face and hear your voice. It's been a long time. Gosh, it's good. I, rec I introduced you to my friends that were in here setting up as the girl who should have been a Texan because you, <laughs> you fit all the descriptions. Should have been a Texan. Yeah, that's the story yeah. of my life. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of Texas, oh, real quick, you're in Dallas. Is that right? Sorry. Are you in Dallas? Is that where you are? We're outside of Dallas. We're about 25 miles east of Dallas in a little farming community called Crandall. Crandall. Okay. All right. I got a lot of friends in the Dallas area, and everybody lives in a different town. Oh, it's a huge, it's an enormous, enormous area. But I've enjoyed visiting with you. I wish you were closer. Yeah. I wish we could go to another conference together. Well, and, you never know. Maybe we'll wind up at the uh, ACFW or something one day. We ought to we ought to try to plan that. I'm shooting for ACFW this year. Where is it so, this year? I forgot. It's in Dallas. It is in Dallas. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a simple right out by ride. the airport. So you would just fly in and be at the conference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Doug, for some reason I had it stuck it in my head. It was in Nashville, but that was last year, wasn't it? No. It, it's in it, it's in September. Yeah. So right. let me know, and I'll pick you up at the airport. All right. Well, that's good to know. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate it. God bless you, sister, I, and I look forward to talking to you again soon, okay? Well, just tell them to look out for Twisted because it's coming. Twisted is coming, y'all. All right. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.